Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. So, this episode was unlike any other episode so far. It was very unique, very Moraine-centric. I'm pretty sure that besides the cold open, Moraine was in every single scene. We see her dealing with the consequences of what she has done up to this point, and also getting ready for what is to come. And for that reason, this list is also going to be very Moraine-centric. So, let's get into it. At number 5, I have the Amorland Seed herself, Swan Sanche. The episode begins as always with the cold open, and this cold open focuses on Swan Sanche as a kid. She's the daughter of a fisherman, and she helps her father catch fish with the One Power. We see here that someone burns down their house and paints the Dragon's Fang on what remains of it. The Dragon's Fang means that someone is accusing them of doing evil or possibly of being a dark friend. And so Swan's father sends her away to the White Tower to become an Aes Sedai. But Swan Sanche does more than simply becoming an Aes Sedai. She becomes the Amorland Seat. And this brings me to my number four. At number 4, I have the Amorlin Seed confronting Loghain and also dealing with Moraine, Leandrin, and Alana. Loghain is brought to the Amorlin and he tries to provoke her into killing him and putting him out of his misery, but Swan decides to use him as an example. Loghain will become living proof of what happens to false dragons and other men who can channel. Loghain, who is now a broken man, begs her to kill him, but he is denied. I really love how much screen time Loghain has had up to this point. I think that this is the last we're going to see of him for this season, but maybe I'm wrong. Looking back on his storyline so far, I think that it's definitely one of the best. The way it was implemented into the show was great, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing what becomes of him on the show. We then see the Amorlin deal with the Aes Sedai that gentled Loghain. Their orders were to capture him and bring him to the White Tower to face trial, and only then gentle him, but obviously that didn't happen. Swan Sanche decides to only punish Leandrin because she was in command after Karini fell, but then Leandrin turns the tables on Moraine, and the Amorlin is forced to question Moraine about her travels. Moraine has been away for two years, and no one knows about her mission. When Swan asks what the purpose of her travels are, Moraine refuses to give an answer, and so the Amorlin punishes her as well. At number 3, I have Moraine healing Matt. It turns out that Moraine knew all along that Rand and Matt had arrived at Tarbalan, and she also knows that there's something wrong with Matt. When she arrives to see them, possessed Matt tries to attack her with the Shadaloga dagger and she manages to separate him from the dagger. Moraine takes one look at the dagger and she immediately realizes that it is from Shadalogoth and so she knows what is wrong with Matt. Moraine pushes the evil entity out of Matt and puts it back into the dagger. Now, I wonder if this is the end of possessed Matt because I'm pretty sure that that is what we are led to believe in the episode. In the book, Matt is not healed like this, but there's a scene in the book that is kind of similar. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to find out, because I think we're not going to see Matt again for the rest of this season, but I'll talk about that towards the end of the video. At number 2, I have Moraine's Punishment. When Swan Sanche punishes Moraine for her disobedience, she sends her into exile. But as it turns out, this is all part of a plan. In an earlier scene, we saw Moraine and Swan having some sexy time and also talking about their secret plan. Swan knows all about Moraine's mission. When Gitara had the vision of the dragon being reborn, the two of them were the only witnesses and since then, they've been working together to find him. Moraine asks to be exiled because Megan, the head of the Blue Aja, wants her to stay at the White Tower, but they can't allow that, and so Swan exiles Moraine, and to ensure this, Swan makes Moraine swear on the Oathroth. After Moraine does so, all of the Aes Sedai turn their backs on Moraine, which I think was a cool little touch. 
I think that for Moraine, this makes perfect sense. In the book, Moraine is never exiled, but I wish she had, because, like I said, it makes perfect sense for her. Now that she's exiled, she can be out there in the world doing whatever she wants, in her case, dealing with whoever is the Dragon Reborn, and she doesn't have to worry about the White Tower. Honestly, I think that this is one of the best changes so far. Throughout this episode, we also see Moraine planning what to do next, and after she's exiled, she puts her plan into action, and this brings me to my number one. At number one, I have everyone reuniting and leaving for the eye of the world. Okay, so this moment had me very hyped for what is to come, but also it made me question some of the changes. Here we see everyone reuniting and being happy for a small moment. Then Moraine tells them that they will travel the ways to the Eye of the World because in the Eye of the World lays the Dark One's prison. And this is a change that is kind of bothering me. In the book, the Eye of the World turns out to be something completely different and not the Dark One's prison. If this is the Dark One's prison, then what happened to Shayogul? Shayogul is such an iconic place in the books, but I'll have to wait to see how this all plays out. Maybe Shayogul will be something different. Moraine then activates the Waygate, and I also had a problem with this moment, because in the book, the ways are something that is only used as a last resort, and only the Ogier know how to activate them. But here, Moraine activates it herself, and the show makes the ways feel like it's nothing special and it's very common but maybe next episode once they're inside the ways this will completely change finally we see them all enter the ways except for matt who doesn't go in and i think that the reason for this is that the actor that was playing matt barney harris didn't return to film the remainder of the season this is just me guessing i don't actually know all we know is that for season 2, a new actor will be playing Matt, and this is a shame because Barney Harris did a phenomenal job at portraying Matt. The reason for Barney leaving the show has not been shared, but whatever the reason is, I just wish him the best. The guy is a phenomenal actor. Overall, I really appreciate how unique this episode was. I'm glad that the show is willing to make episodes like this one. I think that episode 4 is still my favorite, but this was great. The changes that were made have me a little nervous, but uh, I'll just have to wait and see how everything plays out. And that's it for the video everyone. I wanna thank you for watching, I hope you have a great day or night, and I'll see you in the next one.